Hey guys, this is Tom Box, and welcome to MST.TV. And I had a choice to make today. I had to decide whether I want to cover meta text or do I cover rulings. And since I'm going to be judging at Niagara, you know what? Might as well keep my mind fresh. We're going to be doing rulings uh, for today's video. It's going to be a ruling quiz as usual. If you guys don't get 100% on this ruling quiz, your punishment will be to subscribe to MST.TV so you can learn better, win more, you know, get those tops. That's what we're all about. So make sure you guys smash that, th that thumbs up button and hit the subscribe ding notification bell and let's get going I might have said let's go and let's go straight into one quick announcement here and that is going to be I will see you guys at Niagara and uh, during the tournament days of Saturday and Sunday you might see me wear the judge uniform if you approach me while I'm wearing the uniform I probably won't take pictures of you because I am on duty at that point but if you see me wear a hoodie on top of it or I'm like, somewhat covered or whatever I'm probably on break and that is a-okay if you find me on Friday that's good too uh, because I am actually not on duty on Friday. So yeah, then I can sign your cards, whatever you guys want me to do. I'd be more than happy to oblige you guys. So that's a quick thing here. So I don't mean to like kind of push you guys away, but I am technically on the clock on that day. Now let's get going. All right, ruling question number one. This one stems from a ruling that we should all know, but it's technically not written in the book. So if you guys don't know this one, I don't blame you guys. So this is an exorcist ruling with application with more generic applications i should say so here is the current scenario on the opposing side of the field there is an exorcist or magnifica on the field with two materials attached, including say a mccallus on that material now as the turn player on the main phase i decide to activate a change of heart targeting that magnifica now magnifica does have an effect that can respond as a quick effect when your opponent activates a card or effect quick effect return one exceeds material you own attached to this card to your extra deck and then special summon that monster from your extra deck and it's treated as an exceed summon so they decide to chain that effect as chain link 2 to the change of heart however I'm more witty than that. I decide to go ahead and chain a forbidden chalice on top of that, targeting that same Magnifica. However, my opponent decided to go, hey, wait a second, my card is not once per turn. I'm going to go ahead and activate Magnifica again using that same effect. And then this is the part where the players call a judge, hey, hey, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, well, it doesn't say once per turn. Why can't I activate it once again? So the judge gets called over, and uh, that's where you come in. How does this scenario resolve? You guys have five seconds to resolve this one correctly and give me the reasoning for it. So five seconds before Grandpa gets sucked into the TV. Three, two, one, zero. And the answer is this. So what happens in this particular scenario is that the Exorcist of Magnifica's second activation technically was illegal. Yes, it doesn't happen. So that part of the chain could not occur. It's a bit hard for people to know this because it's not really written in stone for people unless you really dug up some precedence, which is that quick effect uh, of monsters cannot be activated in the same chain again if it does not carry a cost. So what I mean by that is, for example, Zodiac Whiptail. If you have Zodiac Whiptail on the field or in the hand, you can only basically activate that copy once per chain so they can attach itself onto another Beast Warrior Xyz monster. Why is that, you might be wondering, it's to prevent infinite loops from occurring. Otherwise, you can keep on using it to dodge everything. You can keep on activating and basically build up an infinite chain link so they can burn the clock for whatever reason it may be. So that's basically why it is illegal. This can also be applied to, say, Cyframe Gear Gamma. Gamma does not carry a cost, but you don't see people activating that same copy of Gamma over and over and over again to basically choose the correct monster effect to negate. You don't see that happening because Gamma... Again, because it does not carry a cost, it can only be activated once in the hand. Therefore, you need like multiple copies of Gamma if that was the case. Uh, in any case, because of that, the Magnifica in this particular chain link will resolve like this. So the Forbidden Chalice gets activated, gets resolved. The Magnifica is negated. Magnifica cannot actually tag itself out. So then the change of heart will now resolve and take control of that Magnifica. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, oh, what about snow? Snow can activate, you know, twice in the same chain. Well, that's because snow has a cost. As I said, the very key thing here is that, you know, quick effects without cost versus quick effect monsters with cost. See, that was pretty easy. Let's go on to number two. Okay, number two here, players have argued on this scenario and it does require a little bit of judgment here. So 
Uh, here we go, guys. So on the opposing side, nothing relevant whatsoever. It is just the sprite player doing their thing. And this one relates to the frogs and the toads. So on the turn player side, there is a sprite elf on the field and they decide to activate the sprite elf reviving the swap frog because there's a Ronin totem in the graveyard and they want to get an additional body to get perhaps more monsters. I mean, these totally awesome is already in the graveyard, so that's not the issue. They just can't revive it because there's no monsters on the field. So the swap frog gets summoned onto the field and activates its effect to send another level two uh, aqua monster from the deck to the graveyard however uh upon resolution it's successful it goes to resolution picking up the deck it looks through the deck and realizes, oh no i sided one of my frogs out and declares that oh this was an illegal activation and i'm just gonna have to take it back the opponent says hold on a second that's this is not an illegal activation and it's not even a legal resolution. You can still resolve the swap frog. You'll just have to send your swap frog on the field to the graveyard as swap frogs effect allows you to send a level two aqua monster from the deck or field to the graveyard. A lot of people kind of forget that it can do that. And uh, it, this will put him at a major disadvantage. Like, but uh, my intention was to send from the deck and therefore my intended target's not there. And therefore the whole thing is illegal. And uh, the opposing player is, is basically saying, nope, you have to take this move. You can't take it back. You're gonna have to resolve your card. So a judge is called over. And how would you rule this particular scenario? You guys have uh, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and grandpa is now stuck in the TV. Now, based on my personal experience, there's a similar scenario that I talked about, you know, illegal activation. Say you activate compulsory evacuation device, you targeted something that cannot be targeted, and therefore we basically do not force your card to resolve. You will go back into the point where things will be uh, basically in a legal game state which both, both players agree. However, this is not that case in my opinion. This particular case, the card has been activated because the Swap Frog does not target anything. Therefore, nothing happened during activation that would be considered illegal. And therefore, the Swap Frog technically has to send itself to the graveyard because the activation was successful and we we're upon the resolution of the card and just because you made a mistake by not checking your graveyard not remembering your side that's no excuse <laughs> for that because you should be maintaining your own deck and game state for that matter and in this particular case it wasn't an illegal activation in my opinion uh in this particular case on resolution the resolution was also still legal so the swap frog in my opinion would be sent to the graveyard because uh first of all swap frog didn't target so you're gonna still have to pick something to send and uh, therefore the sprite elf basically wasted its effect and the turn essentially got botched well it got botched by a misplay so always count your frogs i don't know how other judges are going to rule this because you know there's intention and intended target but I think it's pretty clear cut that you have the opportunity to count all your cards. You should know what is in your side deck and therefore it's up to the player's responsibility to play correctly. And since there was nothing illegal about that entire play, they basically have to resolve with effect. I, that's how I see it. So question number three, welcome back at Point of the Red Lotus. So now that I've equipped myself with the right information and confirmed it with a lot of other judges themselves, I think this one is pretty clear cut now as uh, if it wasn't, then we would have problems with runic rulings as well. But here is the question, cutting all the junk aside, during the draw phase of the turn, an appointer of the Red Lotus was activated on the opposing side of the field and they've taken away the Havness. The tier limits Havness has been banished. And long story short, board gets broken. However, it's a pretty mediocre board until the fact that the Havness has to come back into hand. So proceeding to the end phase, the turn player decides to go, oh, uh, a point of the Red Lotus, I'm going to have to add back my Havness back into my hand. Okay. However, the opposing player says, hold on, you don't actually get your card back until your next end phase of your next turn. Like, they're like, where does it say that on the card? So, of course, they have an argument, they call a judge. So, when does the appointer of the Red Lotus actually finish resolving their card? Is it the end phase of the next opponent's turn? 
or is it the next end phase that they enter? You guys have five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And the answer is it returns to the opponent's hand during the next end phase they enter. The before, everyone kind of argued and they pointed out Yugipedia's ruling pointing to an old document in the Stardust Overdrive sneak peek card rulings version 1.0. However, that is old. There has been multiple erratas of the card from the first generation errata to the Stardust Overdrive errata, which says, oh, you, you banish it until the uh, opponent's next turn. However, we've received, of course, another errata from OP14, which removes that entire line entirely. Like you should not use Yugipedia as a reliable source. Uh, but regardless, even they updated it, removed that entire line. So there should be no more ambiguity. I've been, people have been arguing this left and right because of the old Stardust Overdrive document. And even that document, if I click on the link now, it takes me nowhere. It's been removed off of Konami's site, so we should not have any more arguments about this. And the reason why I bring this up is actually related to uh, Runix, because um, there have been several players that argued that about the battle phase thing, where you have to skip your next battle phase. They thought it applied like the old a point of the Red Lotus. Keep that in mind, guys. Rulings do get updated, and uh, if you try to ignore it and try to bring up an old ruling, you might have out of the information, and that would be disadvantageous to you because if you try to play along that judges are aware they're gonna play with the updated stuff and uh yeah don't get screwed by a pointer of the red lotus you get your card back during the next end phase however if it is currently the end phase and a pointer of the red lotus gets activated since you are currently in an end phase therefore it is not your next end phase then it will be banished well a little bit longer okay so if it's during the end phase that they hit you with a pointer then it goes away until the next end phase Okay, this last one here is about policy. I just want to get this out the door so, you know, you guys don't waste time in your upcoming tournament and, you know, time is precious. Seems like everyone's going into board breaker mode, letting things play out. So one player decides to play tier months and they mill a bunch of cards into the graveyard, activate a bunch of effects. There's like, you know, four or five effects going on, chain this, chain that. And the player starts writing down stuff. They started to write down, you know, which, uh, which effects have been used uh, by which tier limit. And then the tier player calls a judge, calls a judge on the opponent for taking notes. So you guys know what's going on here. Well, what do you think the judge is going to say? This is kind of opinionated, but honestly, it's not really opinionated. If you've, if you've read the policy, you should know this one. You guys have five seconds to guess what's actually going to happen. That's five, four, three, two, one. So first of all, that form of note taking is allowed, but I want to warn you guys about something, which is keeping your notes up to date. Remember, note taking for this is mainly to help you maintain a legal game state. So maintaining hard once per turn is good because you're preventing your opponent from activating stuff uh, that has already activated and therefore a second activation would be illegal and would push towards an illegal game state. So that stuff is all good and fun, you know, main, you know, mandatory effects, mandatory end phase resolutions, resolving lingering effects that have to go through. All those things you can take notes on. But one thing I want to keep track of for this particular scenario, because uh, sometimes it does come up, is that once you're done with them, make sure you keep your notes up to date. So when the turn passes, those things reset, right? So, you know, Havnis, Scare and Murley, all of them can have their effects again. And basically what I'm going to say is like try to scratch it off if you're trying to use that as a reminder. So, um, yeah, 100% scratch it off because if you're trying to argue with old notes, that's misrepresenting the game state. And we all know where that's going to lead. That is going to be a much more serious infraction if you try to argue with old notes. And depending on how investigations go, it could be uh, a lot worse than just a game loss. I'm just putting that out there. So keep your, if you're gonna be taking notes legally, make sure you keep them up to date so they do not end up misrepresenting the game state. 
So, did you guys get everything right? I hope you guys did because if you did, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and you guys can be, you know, the shining stars of, you know, ruling expertise. If you guys didn't get it right, well, also hit the subscribe button because you can, you know, stay around for MST.TV to learn more about meta relevant rulings, stuff that you don't want to deal with, arguments that can be prevented. You know, you want to have fun playing this game. And, uh, well, that's all I got for this video, guys. Now, I want to announce one more quick thing. Of course, I'm going to Niagara, but the other thing is, uh, shipment uh, for the next week at MST Merch will be, well, slightly delayed, guys. Sorry, guys, because, well, we're in Niagara, so uh, uh, we're not handling that uh, until we come back. So there's a, I believe there's going to be a notification on the website. Um, so there's that. Uh, but don't worry, we'll get right back to it once we come home. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in Niagara. So, you know, good luck to you guys in Niagara. Uh, see you Friday. I might be playtesting a bit, you know, just for fun. I'm playtesting to help you guys because I don't get to really play. So I'm just, you know, scratching an itch. And I'll see you guys later.